From an outsider's perspective, the world of architecture is actually pretty mysterious. And even if you're in the profession itself, you still sometimes don't really know what it is an architect actually does. And even if you do work as an intern or possibly a designer after you get out of school, you quickly realize that what they teach you in school is completely different than the profession itself. It's almost as if we're purposefully left in the dark. Today, we're talking about what an architect really does. There's over 65,000 architecture firms and over 115,000 architects in just the US alone. So you can probably imagine that each firm is run a little bit different than the other. To become an architect, you have to get a degree from an accredited school. You have to earn over 3,500 hours working at an architecture firm or related practice. And then you have to take a series of exams called the ARE. In some states, you actually have to take more exams than just the ARE. Before you become an architect and after you have your degree from college, you're usually hired on as a designer or an intern. You can actually have multiple architects working at the same firm. And within that firm, you can have multiple architects working on the same project. Let's say you wanna build or remodel a small structure. Each state's jurisdiction should have a clear delineation of what type of structures need a licensed professional to sign and seal the documents for them. You can usually figure out if your building needs an architect by giving your local building department a quick call. These sealed documents or construction documents are usually what allows you to start building your project. It's usually safe to assume though that if your building's gonna be occupied, you probably need a professional to sign off on it. On your initial meeting with the architect, you two will bounce ideas back and forth and the architect will usually take notes about what it is that you wanna design and build. Projects from start to finish typically go through five stages or phases, abbreviated as SD, DD, CD, the bidding phase, and CA. In the time following your initial meeting with the architect, they're going to come up with a set of drawings or schematic designs to make sure that you and the architect are on the same page. This phase is called the schematic design phase or concept design phase. During this phase, there's gonna be a lot of communication between you and the architect. There's gonna be emails, phone calls, meetings, and this is all to make sure that you two are on the same page and that you both are happy. During the schematic design phase, the architect will look at the project scope, programming, conceptualization, prototyping, sketching and modeling, client meetings, overall building layout, and the material studies. Next is the design development phase, or the DD phase. The design development phase is the phase in which design documents are continued from the approved schematic design phase, and they begin to identify site, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, structural, and more architectural details. During the design development phase, the architect will look at the dimensions and measurements of different spaces, the material selections, the design will be further refined, consultants will be added to the team, also cost estimates will be given. This is usually when the drawings by the architect are reviewed by building officials and they'll leave comments or red lines on them. The next phase is the construction documents phase. This is when the architect will put together a set of drawings that will specify how the building should be built. During the construction documentation phase, the architect will develop the design into construction documents, and these will be handed off to the contractor. The client will make a lot of decisions on the design, and then the architect will make detailed drawings of how the building will actually be built. The next phase is the bidding phase. This is when you and the architect put together your design and send it off to contractors. The contractor will then send you an estimate on how much it'll cost for them to build your project. Sometimes contractors come in a little bit earlier in the design phases, but for this example, we're just gonna say the contractor comes in during the bidding phase. During the bidding phase, the drawings are issued out to bid, and then the architect advises the owner slash the client on a contractor to select. Next, the contractor is determined. After the working contract has been established between the three of you, that's when the architect will enter what is called construction administration phase. During the architect's construction administration phase, they're gonna make a lot of pre-announced visits to the site. This is just to make sure that the building is going according to plan and how they specified. 
Almost every requirement that the architect has of the contractor is listed within the construction documents that they provided to them. If the contractor has any problems, they'll issue what is called a change order. A change order is something that got lost in translation between the contractor and the architect. At the end of the construction administration phase, we go into something called substantial completion and then final completion. Substantial completion usually happens when the building can be utilized as originally intended. And then usually about 14 to 30 days or two weeks to a month after substantial completion is when you go into the final completion stages. At the end, the architect will give you the as-built AutoCAD or drafted drawings, and the architect will prepare all documents needed for project closeout. During the construction administration phase, the architect will make many pre-announced site visits. There will be consultations with the owner and client, the contractor and subcontractors. Issues are addressed, and then finalization of a running punch list by the contractor. I know that this is a lot to take in and it can get really confusing. So I designed a diagram. I placed it in the description below. Download it if you would like. Like the video if you like the video and consider subscribing down below if you want to see future content. Check out those two videos over there. They contain a whole lot of digestible architectural related information. And right here is a list of all the patrons that support the channel through Patreon. Patreon is where creative thinkers and makers like yourself can support someone like me. On top of that, you get a lot of cool benefits and exclusive downloads. Regardless though, thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.